Hello Year 10, it's Miss Rowe. I'm just making a quick video on P4. So my previous video is P3, which was identify two types of referral. And um, this one, you have to explain how three barriers to accessing health and social care services may be overcome. So let's move on to that. So, P4. A barrier is something that prevents an individual from using a service or having the healthcare treatment they need. And that's a key word as well, individual. Um, same as some of the other ones we went over last lesson, which was client, service user, client group, individual and local. So, just make a little note of that in your exercise books or in your folder i don't mind even if you want to stick it on the front cover of your folder that'd be great just so you know to refer to someone as an individual or service user etc okay so um for p4 we're going to look at some of the barriers so what we want to think of is why someone would not be able to use a healthcare um, or social care service because of barriers. So here's a, a list. So communication, well, obviously for that, it's a barrier because if you speak a different language or say you are deaf and need someone to sign for you, but there's no one on site, well, these people obviously... Um, need an interpreter so that could be uh, an example of communication barriers um if there's not like braille for people who are blind or large print for those who have visual impairments that's another communication barrier which we need to think about in this p4 um like i said about the interpreter if not just sign language, any other language, they speak French, Urdu, etc. They, well, they might not understand anything you're saying because they'll need an interpreter. Um, cultural beliefs, uh, values and beliefs, I should say. So what we're saying there is obviously some cultures, um, especially when it comes to mental health issues illnesses uh, and learning disabilities it's quite a stigma in certain cultures so obviously individuals with these conditions they end up hiding it um from family from the friends and they're not taken for treatment or they're not helped because obviously it's frowned upon to have mental illness or learning disabilities so that's something we need to cover um, cost might not be able to afford you know a private service um so a private dentist um is too expensive because there's no nhs dentist available so for example you go to the dentist and they say right we can look at your tooth in your gums but we can't get you in for six weeks well, obviously, that's an issue because you can't wait that long on the NHS. However, if you have money, then you can pay for a private service instead, which might get you in tomorrow. So cost is always a barrier. If you don't have the money, then you can't have the service, can you? So uh, cost, like, for example... Um, car parking fees some hospitals for example there's one called the Walton Centre in Liverpool I went to a few years ago and I think it was six pounds for just one hour so that for some people is just ridiculous so they can't pay for the trans for transport jumping on the bus jumping on the train and the car parking fees are too high so also getting time off um work puts people off attending an appointment because at the end of the day you're losing money not working um having a low income also can affect um this because 
obviously, like we said, can't afford private services, might not be able to afford parking fees or getting to the hospital. So that's a barrier uh, location. So location wise, we are saying if a certain service isn't available around here. So for example, we need to see a neurologist in Blackpool because we live in Blackpool or around the area, but we can't because there's no one available. We'll need to go to Liverpool or Manchester instead, for example. So it's um, the location can definitely be a barrier because if they're not in the area, you might not be able to go. Um, also, some people live in rural areas, which means there's no public transport, they're just isolated in the middle of nowhere. If you've not got a car, then obviously you're going to struggle. So that, again, is a example of a barrier. Physical access. Has the hospital or the GPs got ramps, lifts, automatic doors? Um, can you get in nice and easy if you're, you've got, uh, you're in a wheelchair? Um, parents with prams? Um, elderly people just walking with the sticks or someone who has like MS, for example, might need a wheelchair or a stick. Um, the physical access is very important barrier because if you don't have ramps, lifts, automatic doors, etc., then you can't get in. So that's something you need to think about. Um, so... Some, obviously, for when it comes to physical access, some people might be on different medication. So they might not be able to use the service because they can't drive or they can't use public transport because of the medication they're on. So again, that's a uh, barrier to think about for physical access. Um, psychological. So... There's different psychological barriers here. Um, fear is one of them. People get very anxious or they're fearful of going to doctors or some people absolutely can't stand going to the dentist. So that's a psychological barrier. You have to get over that fear or anxiety just to go to the dentist. So that's a barrier we need to think about. Um, individuals obviously might be afraid um of having a so you know a serious illness <clears throat> excuse me um might have a ser uh, they might be worried because they've been googling or whatever they might be worried that their suspicions of having a, a really serious illness are going to be confirmed by that appointment so that's something else we need to think about <coughs> um loss of independence that's another psychological barrier um, so like an older person might not want to go into care because they don't want to be looked after by others or say they've got dementia or Alzheimer's and they might lose the license. So they don't want to lose that independence going to, um, into residential care. Um, another for psychological could be people um, just pride in general. They don't want to admit they actually need help. So that's a big issue um, that you might have seen in your family or your friends. Um, person with mental health problems might not realise they're ill. So they like, might not want to go to the appointment because they think they're fine. Um, some people avoid using the service because of the stigma. Um, similar to what we talked about with the culture side of things. So they'll... They don't want to get labelled or something. So whether it's mental health or anything else, uh, they might be too embarrassed to use the service because they're going to get labelled as something. So confidence and courage, to be honest. They might not want to ask for help because they're not confident enough. Um, just think of yourself. Uh, are you happy asking for help? If you're not, then this is the kind of barrier we're thinking of uh, psychologically. Um, lack of resources. So barriers include 
lack of staff or specialists, like we were saying before on location. There might be a lack of staff um, in the neurology department, so the nearest hospital could be Manchester. Um, drugs and treatments are not available on the NHS. This is an issue we can have sometimes, or a barrier, I should say, because people are not getting the treatment or drugs they need because it's only private or it's not yet available on the NHS. Um, an individual might not be able to afford private treatment um, if obviously the NHS treatment is not available. Um, time. So time barriers might include um, hospital appointments, they take up a lot of time, uh, prevent you from working or you might not be able to get a, um, a sitter or something for your child during the appointments. That's that's a time barrier. Um, an individual with poor mobility may need to be accompanied by a friend or relative. Um, they might not always be available, so they might need to have an appointment, but they must have, say, their son or daughter needs to take them, but they're working full time. So some people or some services, I should say, are they're only available during working hours. So obviously you don't want to, you might not want to tell your boss that you're ill. So you don't ask for the time off for the appointments, which obviously then can cause you an issue and it's a barrier because you, you don't want to let your work know that there's an issue. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to attend your appointment because you don't want others to know. So have a little think about that. So explain how three barriers to accessing health and social services may be overcome. So have a little think about that. Obviously, you need to catch up with P3 if you've not done it. Start this P4. Um, you can get these videos from home anywhere you get youtube you can see these videos to help so have a little think explain three examples of communication barriers um and other than communication identify and explain four barriers to accessing health and social care services you've just got to make sure when we're in lessons you understand what's um, going on as in like what are we going through what are we actually talking about in lesson which um, assessment are we on just so you don't get confused because I do understand there's a lot of information we're going to be covering okay right then I'll see you in lesson